Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and in this video we're going to be talking about our own moon. And we're going to try to answer the question of whether it was possible for this beautiful object right here to assist in creating life on Earth. We're going to talk about something that happened over 3 billion years ago when the first life appeared on Earth. And we're going to try to recreate this period using the universe in a box. Welcome to What The Math. So approximately 3-ish billion years ago, Moon actually didn't really look like this at all. As a matter of fact, today we get to see the signs of previous Moon's activity right here on the surface. This dark patch that you see is what are known as Mare, and these are leftovers of really, really, really large basaltic volcanic uh, activity. Right here, this, all of this used to be basically lava. And this is the side that's facing our planet Earth. Now, we're going to come back to this in a few seconds and I'll explain to you why this is actually important. But first, let's actually go back uh, approximately three-ish billion years. And so right here, we're actually going to be using this uh, video from NASA, Evolution of the Moon. Very, very awesome video made uh, a few years ago. Following the heavy bombardment, when basically Moon got most of its craters, it experienced a, a very long period of several billion years of basically the inside of the moon sort of getting really really hot and this was due to the similar effect that why you know earth is hot on the inside the radioactive decay of various um, radioactive materials like for example uranium and thorium um, that kind of created this a very 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 large very massive volcanic activity on the surface of the moon which as you can probably imagine was really really hot and also emitted a lot of heat and this is kind of what we're headed toward this produced a lot of energy and a lot of heat that was radiating planet Earth. At the same time, back then the Moon wasn't as far away from Earth as it is today. As a matter of fact, uh, Moon has moved away from Earth quite uh, dramatically, and it was actually at a distance of maybe just um, about 10 to 15 radii of Earth uh, away from Earth, which is only, in terms of kilometers, um, only about hundred thousand kilometers or so or possibly even closer it started originally somewhere over here and it moved away in about a billion years or so so not only was the moon closer uh it also had a lot more effect on earth in terms of tidal effects so uh, basically earth received a lot more tidal energy from moon as well and at the same time um the surface of the moon was dramatically hotter and produced a lot of infrared emissions that you can kind of see in the background right there. It's a little bit difficult to see, but basically it produced a lot of heat uh, simply from those volcanoes. We're going to recreate this a little bit better in a few seconds, uh, but let's actually go back um, to the solar system itself and try to recreate all of this, how it was about three billion years ago, over three billion, three and a half billion years ago when life just started on Earth. So first of all, there's actually a bit of a problem. I'm going to demonstrate to you the problem by placing Earth at where it was uh, at that time. It was probably just a little bit closer than 1 AU. So maybe somewhere right here, uh, because it actually did move away from the sun during um, the last uh, three and a half billion years. The problem was that um, the sun back then was also less um, energetic. It actually produced a lot less luminosity. And so if I changed the age of the sun, making it only about a billion years old, um, you'll notice that it actually produces less luminosity. As a matter of fact, uh, about 76% of luminosity that it has today. And it also has less temperature as well, which creates a problem for Earth. If it was in the same location as it is today, and if it basically had a relatively similar composition and the water here uh, was readily available as well, it would imply that uh, the temperature on the surface here would actually be below zero. As a matter of fact, this would imply that the surface of Earth would most likely be completely frozen over. Uh, so there would be a lot of ice here. It would probably look very similar to how Europa and Enceladus look today. And so um, there would really be very little in terms of the actual liquid water on the surface. So something may have actually been um, creating this liquid water 
And that something may have been the moon. And this is actually why I wanted to talk about this, because there is actually a very high chance that the actual radiative power of the moon's lava, uh, basically the basaltic lava that was on the surface, was enough to possibly power the Earth a little bit more and thus create the liquid water needed. So basically here, um, if we were to place the moon at it, this particular distance and also basically then bombard the surface of the moon until it kind of looked more molten, um, this would sort of look like what it looked like from Earth back then. So there would be a lot and a lot of basaltic lava on the surface here. Now, this actually is uh, pretty strong in terms of producing um, power. As a matter of fact, because this was always sort of facing the Earth, it was always basically on the same side as Earth because Moon was tightly locked. Um, this in itself was probably enough to give Earth that little boost of energy to basically melt the water and turn uh, the ocean into liquid ocean. Now, that's still not really a fact. As a matter of fact, that's just an assumption for now. Uh, but we can do a little bit of calculation to try to find out how much heat this may have been producing. So uh, the easiest way to do this is to use something known as Stefan Boltzmann equation. This is actually what it kind of looks like for stars. And you can actually use this to find the luminosity of a star, knowing its radius and temperature. Um, and there's obviously on one calculator that helps you do this as well. If we basically just take a part of the lunar surface, uh, which is about 38 million kilometers, but let's just say we do 10 million kilometers, um, and the temperature of a typical um, basaltic lava, typical lava on Earth that you can see right here, and this is actually from Hawaii, um, this is about 1000 to 1200 degrees Celsius. So in the equation here, if we put, let's just say, 1000 degrees, and uh, decrease the emissivity to about 90% from perfect black body. And this is actually from a very interesting PDF I found um, from NASA on thermal emissions from different uh, lava, basically. And uh, here the, the emissivity values they give are around about 0.9 or so. Uh, you can actually check this out. It's in the link in the description below. And putting all this rough equation um, in here, we'll give you this. This is uh, in terms of watt of radiative power. And because moon is actually farther away, obviously some of this energy would be lost to distance. Uh, but the value you get roughly is this much, 1.34 times 10 to the power of 18 um, watt, which is actually quite a lot higher than uh, Earth was receiving from the sun. In this case, it's actually the moon, but Earth was receiving about the same um, from the sun at this distance. Now. Now, this doesn't suggest that this lava melted the water, but the amount of heat generated here that would actually reach planet Earth then could potentially uh, move the temperature just high enough to actually uh, force water to uh, become liquid on the side facing the moon. In other words, the moon was giving away so much heat that it's quite possible that it would actually melt uh, the ice shelves on the side of the moon. In other words, uh, the side facing the moon uh, would more likely receive a lot more heat, thus forcing the actual ice to melt. And so in that sense, it's quite possible that it was actually moon's influence on Earth that uh, caused a lot of liquid water on the side of the moon and also potentially forced life to evolve quicker. So in that sense, moon quite likely had a very direct impact on the development and evolution of life on Earth. And one of the reasons I even started talking about this is because this event, uh, this melting event, the outflow of lava that caused the radioactive elements to sort of create this on the surface of the moon happened pretty much around the same time as the first life uh, evolved on Earth. And so there's a very strange correlation between the first life and this event right here. And also, we know that back then, sun didn't really produce that much heat, so uh, we don't really know what made Earth have liquid water on the surface. Some people speculate that it was higher surface pressure or possibly greenhouse gases like uh, CO2 and uh, obviously liquid water or water vapor, that is. Um, but the moon may have also served its purpose and it's possible that this was actually the main influencer Obviously, not just to melt liquid water, but 
also possibly provide other types of energy to help life evolve on the surface. Because um, if sun was not providing enough energy, the moon may have added all of this. So all in all, it's actually a pretty interesting speculation. Uh, and I would like to ask you guys what you think in the comments below. Because I know my math for calculating the actual emissions was really, really rough. So it's definitely uh, not the most precise calculation ever. Uh, but the idea is actually still there. So could the uh, moon back then, because it was actually molten like this, provide enough heat to planet Earth to basically melt its ice shelves and thus generate enough power to help create life? Now, obviously, we won't be able to answer this question indefinitely uh, until we understand how life actually forms on Earth or basically what caused the life to suddenly appear out of nowhere. Uh, because we do have other objects in the solar system that have all the components for life, but they may not actually have life itself. Until we go to those objects, like for example Enceladus and Europa, we won't really be able to answer this question with 100% accuracy. Uh, but if one day we discover life on those objects as well, it would mean that um, life formed on Earth while it was still basically frozen, while there was a, a huge ice shelf on the surface, and all of this formed underneath the ice itself. So there's definitely a lot to answer here and a lot of things to kind of think about, um, but it's really the studies that we need. And to get those studies, we actually have to go to Enceladus, we have to go to Europa, we have to dig deep, deep inside the actual ice shelf and try to find out what's going on. Anyway, so that's all I wanted to talk about in this video. And hopefully now you know a little bit more about the history of the moon and also how it sort of changed over time and how it may have influenced Earth. And also do check out the video from NASA, I posted it in the description below. It's a pretty cool creation, unfortunately it's not as popular as uh, some of the other space videos, uh, but it is a really awesome video that they made. I'll see you guys tomorrow, come back tomorrow to learn something else, uh, consider subscribing and maybe clicking in that bell button to be notified about the videos, and maybe even support us here on Patreon because it does help a lot. I'll see you guys tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye.